Welcome to another video, I hope you're doing all great. Thanks to my latest subscriber, Hardcore Trader, welcome to the Hood brother. And now please make sure to hit that like button, let's get this video up to 200 likes, hit that subscriber button and turn on post notification to get notified for every new video. And now let's get started with today's episode. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about forks. I saw a lot of comments, tweets and also telegram messages about the upcoming Pulse Chain fork. So I think there are some open questions going around the community. I try to do my best to inform you about the forks, about the upcoming fork of the Pulse Chain, but also in general, what are forks in general. So the main topics of today is the Ethereum fork. What is a fork? What is the difference between a soft and a hard fork? We will see that in the past many, many forks happened already. For example, we had a lot of Bitcoin forks, but also Ethereum forks in the past. Then the next point will be the upcoming Berlin Ethereum hard fork. Yes, there's also an upcoming hard fork for Ethereum. And then why is Richard Hart even forking Ethereum for itself for Hex and other tokens? And I will show you my interpretation of the upcoming Pulse Chain fork with a little Picasso drawing. So stay tuned for the end of this video for that. We're gonna see which points are open, like what, there are some questions open about the topics in general. And now let's get started right away. So what are forks exactly? Cryptocurrency forks are considered to be a rare occurrence in the crypto world in general. Some are planned, others results of extreme situations. Whatever the case of appearance might be, one thing is for sure, when they happened, there are usually big changes ahead. And I can guarantee you that already, even if we don't very, very little about the upcoming fork. That's why today we're going to talk about forks in general and as well the Pulse Chain fork. So let me just change the screen real quick. We have a definition of fork. I told you already before, what is a fork? We have two types of forks. We have the soft fork and the hard fork. First, the soft fork is more of a little change. They happened all the time. We can see soft forks are watered down version of hard ones. They are called soft because they don't change anything surrounding the actual structure of the protocol. That means this is like a Windows upgrade. This is like a Windows patch. You just can install a little patch and everything is good. But if you would like to go from Windows 10, for example, to the next version, you have major changes in the protocol. Soft forks, some of them are more popular and frequent than soft forks, which are changed the size of a specific block. We saw that back in the Bitcoin history, by around 2017. And the second point for the soft forks are, normally you can also run a node with an older version, with an older software version, and you can still participate in the network. If it comes to hard forks, this is a little bit different. Hard forks are huge changes in the cryptocurrency in question. They can change the cryptocurrency's protocol itself, rendering the older version of that protocol invalid. For example, if you're going to change the mechanism from proof of work to proof of stake, this is a real big change. We will see this in a second when we talk about the upcoming Berlin fork. This is the way to the end state of Ethereum, which will be proof of stake. This is the same for the pulse change. I'm pretty sure it will be proof of stake. So just let me proceed real quick. Hard forks are usually implemented under extreme conditions. They are rarely planned. Most of the time their appearance is due to necessity. This makes sense because there are usually no legitimate reasons to implement a hard fork in normal function cryptocurrencies. So this is what we see as well why Richard Hart is forking. There is no such thing implemented at the moment in Ethereum, which would allow us to continue on this chain. So the next topic is we saw some major forks in the past as well. First, more popular maybe Bitcoin forks. Some people can remember back in the days 2016, 2017. It started already earlier. You can see Bitcoin started first. We had some blockchain forks and then we had the first soft fork, then we all of a sudden had more forks. There were some discussions about SegWit. Anyway, people forked away, for example, Bitcoin ABC. We had also Bitcoin Cash forked away. Some rare ones, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond. You see, we have already a lot of chains going on. And if you continue to scroll down, you can also see Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Core forked away. Then they even forked again from itself. But by the end, you can see we have a lot of different Bitcoin forks, different Bitcoin chains which are working more better 
others not so much. We have Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Cash, ABC, Bitcoin Core, Main Bitcoin, this is the real Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gold and other forks, and the Bitcoin Dark Coin. So this should show you already that a lot of forks happened in the past. This is nothing unusual, people forking all the time. As you can see, there are many forks happening also in the Bitcoin environment. But now let's proceed to the Ethereum environment again. There is an upcoming hard fork. Since 8th of the March, the Berlin upgrade for the Ethereum has been officially announced. This upgrade will be part of a series which is non-backward compatible hard forks, which the developers have planned from the beginning as the intermediate stations on the way to Serenity the final shape of, of Ethereum. This means you have first what we learned before, the non-backward compatible hard forks. This is not just a soft fork, this is a real hard fork, which include major changes on the way to the final shape for Ethereum. So let me proceed, let me see what's going on. The upgrade will be activated with the block 12,244,000, which is expected to happen on the 14th of April. The testnet is already rolled out or will roll will be rolled out shortly. And why I'm talking about the Berlin upgrade? Because of the four EIPs. EIPs are Ethereum improvement proposals, which will be injected with the Berlin upgrade. There are four changes, like four major changes. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about 2929. If we scroll down a little bit more, you can find the EIP 2929, increasing gas costs for state access opt-codes. And if we're going to have a look at the ethereum improvement proposals.org website you can see which proposals which eips are already in the final state so that means they are already ready for the berlin upgrade if we scroll down a little bit and there are many many there if we scroll a down a little bit, we find the section last calls and there as well is the EIP 2029. If we click on this simple summary, we can see increases gas cost for as load. And this is the main function, of course, other cryptocurrencies using as well in the DeFi space. But Hex is using this mechanism. If you're going to end your stake, some calculations are needed. And in the moment, if you have already a lot of stakes, a lot like me, you have to pay already a lot of gas for an end stake and this should increase around 2 to 3x this will mean the gas fees to end the stake will be already higher even if we pay now on a low day day hundred dollars this could be roughly two to three hundred dollars to end the stake so this is not working at all for us so I will not go into the details technically what is happening with the as load function with the increase of the as load function, but this will have a huge effect to end your stake in the future on the Ethereum change. So this is why Richard Hart will fork Ethereum itself. And if we have a quick look in the past, we had already some Ethereum hard forks. For example, Ethereum Classic was one. We had another one which called Ether Zero and as well Metropolis is one. So forks happening all the time. This time. I think the motivation is a little bit different, but anyway, we gonna fork Ethereum and this will be on the website pulsechain.com. You can see a cheaper, faster fee burning Ethereum fork. And this is also the main reason why Richard Hart is forking. The fees are too high and we have to be on another platform. But many of you now ask the question what this will actually mean to their actual stakes on the Ethereum platform. So we will see this in a second. I'm going to show you how a fork normally happens. I also will show you what I don't know so far. Maybe you can help me out with a comment in the comment section down below. If I should get anything wrong, just let me know, write a comment and we will have a chat. So in the next step, I'm going to show you my interpretation of the upcoming fork of Ethereum for PulseChain.com. Of course, we don't know everything in detail yet. I hope to get clarification soon from Richard Hart in the next upcoming stream. But for now, I'm going to show you what I know. Maybe you can correct me if you have any suggestions. Let me know down in the comment section. So let's get started with my Da Vinci skills in paint. If we think we have a, f a chain over here, let's call it the ETH chain and we're gonna do this east chain is producing the blocks all the time 
As usual, our hex lives on this blockchain, so the blocks are created every couple minutes and seconds. And now, on one day, Richard Hart will decide there will be a snapshot, there will be a blockchain hard fork of Ethereum. At the moment, we don't know yet exactly when the fork will happen, so we don't have a block number yet. But what we know for sure, once Pulse Chain will fork away from the main Ethereum chain, this will look like this. The last block will be produced and say let's say we're gonna fork at this block here this means the chain will get forked away we will produce our own blocks ethereum will continue to use and to produce their own blocks as well but the new chain also starts to produce some blocks so let me just finish the drawing real quick like here so this means we have now two chains working and producing blocks and there maybe will be a slight change already so this will be the pulse change if i can tape sup pulse change this will be maybe no longer be proof of work like we know from the miners in Ethereum. This will be probably proof of stake. But now a lot of people ask their questions. Yeah, but what will happen with my hex? What will happen with my stake? So what I gonna know for sure, and I'm pretty damn sure about this, you have like, let's say at this last block, just before the, just before the fork, that means you will have, for example, let's say you have 10 million hex in liquid and you have 15 stakes, maybe laddered, maybe not, doesn't matter. So those are your values. You have them on the last block in the Ethereum chain. This is your wallet. This is your address. Now the fork is happening. What will happen if hex will now live on Ethereum and as well on the new pulse chain? So if we have a closer look on the Ethereum chain, your hex is still there, your hex is safe and your stakes will live continuously on the Ethereum blockchain until you're gonna end them and the liquid hex sits as well on your Ethereum blockchain. But what's now about the new chain, the Pulse chain, you will have a copy of your liquid and staked assets. So for example, in this example, we have 10 million hex liquid. That means you will have now, let's call them hex pulse, just that we know so you will have 10 million hex pulse liquid you still have your 15 hex your 15 stakes but these are hex pulse stakes so those stakes are also staked on the new chain why is that because it's simple you cannot change the smart contract the smart contract of hex is living really through the blockchain of ethereum all the time and cannot be stopped so this smart contract will work forever and your stakes will work forever as well the same is now for the new stakes your stakes and your liquid hex is now on the pulse chain as well so first fun fact you will have the double of hex the double of stakes living on both chains now of course there could be the question what will happen with the old chain with the old hex chain maybe people will migrate away to the new pulse change we don't know it depends what you like but by the end you have both in your wallet it will be the same wallet address like for example if you used matic before you just switch to the matic network and voila already you have the same address and you receive even 0.1 matic to do immense transactions almost for free this brings me to the next point so what we know for sure you will have your hex which is liquid you also will have your stakes on the new chain but there are some open points which i don't know yet so for example what will happen with the ethereum that would mean if you have for example one ethereum in your wallet up here you would after that have one pulse for example but i think richard hart is much much smarter than that this could be a mechanism not like a usual airdrop where you give a away a lot of crypto to a lot of people at once this could result in a huge dump on the chart and i'm pretty sure we would like to avoid that so for example we saw in hex that the bitcoin holders could claim their free hex so maybe there will be a similar mechanism for the polls we could anticipate maybe there are some claim mechanism for ethereum holders maybe there are other mechanism working for example the amount of t-shares you're owning or the amount of liquid hex there are many many open points the second point which i'm not really sure where the journey will go is the liquidity for the moment we have a huge liquidity on the hex usdc pair on uniswap version 2 
we have some liquidity on the Uniswap pair Hex Ethereum and I am really really looking forward to see if the liquidity will rise on both chains because I think it's not just about the fork it's not just about the new chain there will be systems built around like exchanges like block explorer like price websites and maybe backend system as well you need also bridges to communicate with the other blockchain I could imagine that Pulse is sitting in the middle and is connecting to all the other chains around them sort like an interaction with all the chains all the DeFi projects and tokens this would be really really dope so you can see we have still so many questions open so I really look forward what will happen but what I know I will continue to stake and buy hex on the Ethereum blockchain because I'm not worried at all once we fork away and once maybe the people the community will move over to the new pulse chain and hex will just die in a way in a price way on the ETH chain this will be good for me because I have the same which I own now on the new chain whenever we have to go back which is not necessarily a thing pulse chain which will be really really fast this is already guaranteed and fast I mean we will be faster than ethereum we will have the fee burning mechanism so as you can see there are many many points open I also have some questions if you have more inputs let me know down in the comment section below and I'm looking forward for the upcoming fork I'm not worried at all I repeat myself so you will have the both you will have your tokens on the old and on the new chain you will even have more than now so with that I hope this video was helpful if you found any value in it please leave a like and subscribe to my channel this would be really appreciated leave a comment down below if I have anything wrong in this explanation and stay long and fat stay safe out there and see you in the next one peace